perform, improvise, and know where they are. Then they have to. Now, if they don't care about that, then they don't have to worry about it. You know, they don't have to worry about it on two fronts. They don't have to worry about it in terms of they'll be lost all the time. And they don't have to worry about it because they won't be in a group that long. So, so that'd be, yeah, two, two pieces. <laughs> but um, no, if you want to know where you are, it's, it's, it's better if you know the other, you know. But see, I, I, I think this is true in all music. That's my approach to anything, you know. But I'm, I'm, I'm learning more and more as I, as I give these talks that that seems to be a novel thing. But I don't know, Greg, to me that's like, you should always learn all the music that you can learn, you know. It's like having a conversation that you only know half the words that, that, that the other person is using or whatever, you know. So it's not just about your part or, or what you're doing. It's, it's about the whole group. And then especially if you have an improvisational form where there's a lot of improvisation involved with everything. And if you don't know everything else that's happening, then what are you doing when you're improvising? You're just playing some stuff you haven't worked out? You know, that's, that's, that's not it. You know what I'm saying? So, but that's what a lot of people do. So I, I can feel it because a lot of people do simply worry about their part and that's it. And they, and they like, well, the drummer, he'll, you know, he'll keep the rhythm together and the bass player will keep this and, you know. But that's not, that's not the way we work. I mean, it's important that the drummer learns of what everybody else is doing, what everybody else the drummer is doing, and, and every other part, you know? Because otherwise, you don't know how it works together. And then you have more to work with when it, when it comes time to improvise. It's just, it's just knowing the music that gets on It's really saying that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, you're a musician, right? So, have you, is there another way of doing it? Okay. No. <laughs> I guess what I'm interested in finding out is from the get go, mm -hmm. from point one. Right, I just think it's difficult right. to assimilate all that information immediately. So, I'm wondering how it grows, how, what you do initially, uh -huh. and, you know, and, and how you can expand from there. I'm not following you. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah, it's not, it's, not, it's not necessarily easy, and it's not the same easy or hard for every person. Each person is different, you know. It's, it's not like there's some formula or something like that. Um, some people have more of a problem in one area. Some people have more of a problem in another area. Some people have more of a talent in one area, and, you know, so on. So there may be a person that, that rhythm is, they, they don't have that much problem with rhythmic things, you know. They may have problems with pitch things. Because another person may have, you know, the pitch thing may not be a problem, but the rhythmic thing may be a problem, you know. So different people have different things, and, and so therefore they need to work on different aspects of it in order to get together. It's, that, it's not, you know, all these people have, they're different, <laughs> you know, and they have a different way of learning and a different way of relating to things and everything. And each person sort of has to find their way. Of course, you know, we, we try to help each other, but there's a lot of, um, each person has their own issues. I guess that's what I'm trying to say, you know, and, and um, they have to deal with those particular particular issues. And also the function that you play in the band. I mean, you know, the function of a trumpet player, the function of a singer, the function of a bass player, a drummer, you know, it's different in, in, in all music and it's different in different groups, you know. So um, what the things that she has to deal with, that she has to learn, um, Daphne's, you know, has to, maybe has to con concentrate on different things. You know, even though in general they, need to, they, they both need to know all the music, their area of concentration is different. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's because of what he's required to do in the group, his role. That's, that's, that's a, you know, and I don't want to say it like it's a fixed role or anything like that, but there's a general area that he's in. You know, and there's a general area that she's in. You know, in terms of just because of the nature of the instruments. And so, um, you know, the nature of the voice, the nature of the drums, is, 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 is a different thing. You know, so they have to um, develop and nurture different skills, and, and so they bring that focus to, to the music, you know. I mean, just because of nature of the nature of the piano can play more than one note at once, you know, so it has a certain, you know, a certain thing. It's not that he's trying to copy what somebody else has done in the past. He has to figure it out, but still, there's, there's, the instrument has a certain characteristic, and the Craig has a certain characteristic, characteristic on that instrument, you know, and then the music has a certain character, you know, I mean, and so all these things, Come together and kind of, I don't know, the nexus or whatever you want to call it. You know? And um, and it's his job to figure out. I don't play. I don't play piano, so I can't tell him. You know, I don't play drums, so I can't. You know, I can just give hints here and there and things like that. And 
you know, ideas about what's happening with the, with the overall music and everything, but he still has to deal with the drum stuff. You know, I mean, um, on that he's alone, unfortunately. <laughs> you know? And so um, it's, it's really hard to talk about how each person does that because it varies, there's so, there's so much um, variety. It varies with the person, it varies with their role, it varies with what song or song form we're working with, what the idea is behind the song, you know. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of difficult. But if we play something in particular, and then you ask um, one person in the group, well, how do you think about this? Then maybe that will give you some example. But you have to keep in mind that that's only an example. You know, the next song, it may be a completely different story. You know, So um, whenever you go to these clinics and workshops and things like that, you have to remember that people are just giving you examples of things. They're not, you know, it's nothing written in stone. There, there are no... There are no shortcuts and tricks. You just hard, you know, it's just hard. It's just hard work. And the only way to really learn something is by experiencing trying to actually do it. And and by that experience, you, you know, little by little you pick up little small things. And that's what knowledge is. It's a lot of little small things that you can put it together. There's no one big, you know, secret scroll or something like that. These are the answers, you know, it doesn't really exist. Somebody else had a sign. How do you feel about putting a band together? And, and like when you when you when you choose a musician, I mean, like I mean, your music is pretty different than a lot of other stuff. So I mean, I I mean, if you're out and you're hearing somebody playing like straight ahead stuff, I mean, how do you know that they're going to fit into your band? Or? I don't necessarily if, if they're if they're doing that. You know, um, the only way to really know is is to have them try some stuff. I mean, of course you can't do that, but you know, you can't try the whole world. But, whole world doesn't want to play with me, so it's cool. But uh, you know, but the only the only way to do that is is, 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 is to try people out. You may you may hear, I may hear somebody that in one situation. This has happened many times, and I think, oh, I, you know, it's probably cool to play with this person or whatever. And then it doesn't work. You know, I mean, it's just like a marriage, right? You can be like, you know, so death do you part? I do. You know, but how you know how many times does that happen? You know? it's, it's easier to ask. <laughs> Huh? It's easier to add than subtract. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. It may be easier for some people to subtract. But um, but um, it's definitely um, harder to get a divorce than it is to get married. You know? <laughs> so, but yeah, it's you don't know. You don't know until the person until you actually um, play with a person. No matter what the situation is, you don't you don't know how how the vibe's going to be until you actually do it. You know. However, if you have enough experience, you can have some idea. Um, I heard Craig two times before I actually played with him. Well, more than two times, actually, but two times live, I would say, you know. Um, two times in person. Live uh, sounds funny. But <laughs> um, one was with, with um, we were on the same festival with um, um, James Carter. You guys, do you remember that time? Yeah, you guys were playing. Yeah, yeah, you guys were playing, so I, I was on the side of stage, you know. So I heard him play in that situation. And um, I think, there may be another time in between, but I think the next time I heard you was with Tim, with, with Tim Byrne at a small club in Paris, you know. It's funny, because, you know, the guy lives in New York, and both of the times I heard him, it was like thousands of miles away, it's another place. But, um, you know, you hear people's names, and you hear them on record and everything, but I like to hear people in person, personally. I don't, I don't like the record thing. And, um, even, even even at at that time, I wasn't thinking, well, yeah, I want to hit with this person or play with him or whatever. I was I was very impressed with you know with um, what he was doing um, in, in both situations. Um, the Tim Burns situation was more of uh, was more of my cup of tea in terms of, of being a creative situation, you know, in, in in terms of me not knowing what to expect, which is the kind of thing that I, I like to listen to, you know, the kind of thing where I don't know what to expect. I mean, somebody who's just playing do 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 do. I mean, that's, you know, today, you know, I mean, listening to the, to the cats do that back in the day is fine, you know, but listen, somebody do that today, it's not really my cup of tea, you know. Um, I'm just using that as an example. It could be anything that, where I know what to expect, you know. So I tend to like music where it surprises me that, you know, that's very personal, you know, it's using the word creative, but I think that anybody who's being themselves is creative. And, um... But later on, I, I had an idea to do a project, and um, just thinking back in terms of which keyboard players or which piano players I knew that could do this kind of thing, then I remembered that you know that I, I heard him, 
um, in, in these situations. And so I call them up, you know. But then again, you know, you don't know. Like I said, you don't know. And I talked to him on the phone, and I could tell that it was going to be cool just from talking to him because he's kind of an extreme case. Um, sometimes you can just you just know you just have a feeling and you just know that the person's going to going to be okay, you know, if you've heard them and if you talk to them. But in most cases, you you, um, you might have some doubt. You might not know. It's, it's not guaranteed, you know. He could have been a drag, you know. <laughs> <laughs> It's not guaranteed, but I was I was pretty sure that it was going to be cool, and, and it was it was more than cool, you know. Um, on the other hand, is sometimes you know people from like I knew Daphne's for a long time, and we did little things here and little. I mean, I met him in Cuba, you know, and, and he's from Cuba. Probably figured that out. And so, um, <laughs> and and we you know we started playing together just little things before he was even speaking English, you know. We were doing little things together, little just little things, you know. Small things here and there, and I remember doing a concert with them in Cuba where they rehearsed me to death. You know, so, so a lot of little things, and then, you know, you get closer and closer to doing something over the years. Sometimes it happens like that too. It's not just a thing when you're just calling somebody from the clear blue, you know. And different people do. I'm not gonna go through every case, but just one more. With Jonathan, I gave a workshop at his school, you know, and um, and uh, him and some other guys. This is high school, and him and some other guys came up and played with us after the workshop. And then every once in a while they would come over to my house. Um, this was um, up in, in um, the Bay Area. And, um, you know, we would sit down, I was showing some things here and there and everything. And, and, you know, it came together that way. You know, so it, it, it's, not, it's not like I have a method for, for doing that. You know, but at the same time, you know when you need a certain, you know, if somebody's leaving the band and you need a bass player or you need a, a drummer or whatever, you know. Then you think about the people who you know you've come, you've had contact with. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? But all these guys are also working in other groups. It's not like you know they're trapped in this group somehow or something like that. You know, people do gigs in other in other groups, and all that too, to very various degrees. So you know, it's it's um, Daphne works with a lot of different people. Craig really works with a lot of different people. You know? So I don't know if that answers your question. Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just like to say that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> uh, when you're composing, I'm curious what sort of general process you take, how you start a composition, and then what it goes through. I mean, I feel like composing and improvising is, is the same process. I mean, I approach it both kind of the same way. Of course, with composing, you have the advantage that you can go back and edit something and, you know, change it. Which I try not to do that much, but you can, you can you can do that. And in a spontaneous composition, which is what I call improvisation, you can't you can't do that. But I try to approach both the same way, the same amount of um, attention to detail and all that. I try, I try to approach both things um, the same way. Um, when I'm improvising, I'm still concerned with all of the elements of. It's not just like me playing a bunch of licks or whatever. I'm looking at rhythms, you know. I'm looking at form and all these all these different things. Um, I'm not conscious of it, you know, it's not like it's something running into, into my mind, it's sort of internalized. You know, I try to internalize all, all the elements of the music so that I can get beyond that. Um, the notes and the rhythms and all that kind of thing. But um, I pretty much think about the same way. But we got other people in the group to write. I don't know, how, how do you feel about the composition thing? I don't have a special method. Things, to, however it comes to me, however it comes, it's all good. Do you usually write it down, or use a... Sometimes, you know, not always. Diff different things, you know. If it's the more complex it is, I might tend to just to be able to remember it. You know, it's just a memory thing, you know. For me, that, that's, that's what notation is, actually. It's, it's, it's more of a memory device than anything else, you know. And um, if you have a large group of people, it's a convenient way to keep everybody on the same, you know, in the same place. But, um, that's it. I don't. I don't think of notation as the music itself. I don't. I don't place any special importance on it. I. I, I do think it's a very useful skill to know how to read. Don't. Don't get me wrong. You know. But for me, it's just a tool. It, it, the tool. The notes on the page or anything like that are completely separate from the music for me. You know, completely separate. That's why when people come up to me and ask me what time signature is that in, all that kind of stuff, I, I. I barely even relate to that at this stage. You know, because it's. It's. That's just a notation problem. You know, like Daphne likes to say, you can write it out any way you want. You know, <laughs> so. Um, sorry, Craig. Yes, yeah, 
process will be really depends on the competition. Me personally, I I don't write anything down until I have to give it to somebody because I can record it. And I use recording more as a memory device. I can play it or it either into a sequencer, into a tape recorder, into a tape or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I really never, I, I, the last thing I do is figure out how to spell it or what I'm going to name it. It's all exists purely as sound information for me until I have to actually give it to people. And even then it's more it's more convenient for them and for me because you know, I usually don't have time to teach people things by ear or things like that, so I'll give them a chart or give them a score if it's if it's that other than that I hate learning It fixes it in a certain way and it's usually not really what I meant to do. <laughs> what is that a real word for session? Session. That's a new one. Yeah. Another, another they were playing thing. Scrabble the other day. So really <laughs> trying to figure out, hey, that's not a word. <laughs> okay, anyway. Just a smiler. Smiler, yeah. We were trying to figure out if smiler was a word. Yeah, it is a word? Smile is a word. I don't know what smiler. Okay. Somebody who's smiling. <laughs> but it also. Um, Sometimes an improvisation will become the composition or it's something that, like recently, you, you took one of your improvisations and just made it, okay, we'll just make Yeah, but simply, like I said, it's not, I'm not thinking of it like that. It's yeah. just, what, it's just stuff that comes out of you. You know, that's how, that's how I look at it. You know, it comes out of you and, you know, write it down, not write it down, you know, whatever. Huh? What are you saying? Come on, man, contribute. <laughs> Don't be shy. I had to do this one day. <laughs> All right, so, um, you know, and, 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 you know, people ask you, well, what comes first, the rhythm, the chords? But, you know, it's like, you know, sometimes a lot of things are coming at once. Sometimes it's one germ of an idea. It, it can be anything. You know, you, you really shouldn't limit yourself to a process because, you know, stuff could come to you. You could be sitting on the toilet and it just comes. You know, more ways than one, you know. <laughs> so, and so then you gotta, you know, you gotta just... Grab it when it comes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, hey, you never know. You never know what it is, you know. I mean, it could be driving in a car, it could be anywhere, you know. I mean the only problem is is retention as far as I'm concerned, you know, is 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 how do you, you know, keep it long enough, especially like when things come to you like when you're in a half dream straight state or whatever, that's when I have the most problems with, you know, like what was that, you know. If I'm awake, I'm usually okay. Yeah. Usually, but um, but I, I the way I the way I think about music and everything, I mean, I think it's true with a lot of people in the band. I hear a lot of things in relation to each other, a lot of elements that are happening against something else or something like that. You know, so I tend to um, hear things kind of like that. You know, and we'll we'll talk about a little of that today. You know, um, like I don't I don't. I don't hear a lot of things where I hear, well, this is the melody, this is the chord, you know, and, uh, you know, it's four bars and this is four bars. I, I usually don't hear things a lot in that, in that format. I don't know if that makes any sense. Maybe not. Guys, you're standing around with your cameras. <laughs> any other questions about, about, about that? Uh, how many improvisers are there in here? No questions about improvisation? Got it all together? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of still about composition. It's like another composition question. That's okay. That's, that's still an improvisation question to me, so that's okay. So, like, do you, um, do you ever just, like, like, how much of it is just coming from you? Like, you write out, or, like, conceive of one thing and then, like, bring that to your band and then they'll, like, have input? Or is it, like, you can see the whole thing and then you just tell them to play? I don't, I'm not quite sure. Like, I mean, uh, do you get a process from the people in your band? Like, sure. Like, a I mean, it depends on what it is and how much, you know, it depends on the person, really. It depends on the person and how much they want to input or how sure they feel that they can input or whatever, you know. But I've, I've told everybody in the band, I mean, well, Craig's kind of the, at this point, he's not the newest member of the band, but, well, maybe you are. Oh, no, Junior's the newest member. I mean, it depends on what kind of person they are. You know, some people are more, uh, 
you know, I'm interested in what everybody else is doing musically, you know, but it depends on how much, there's always input that you do just because of the nature of, 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 of the music. I, um, based, I, don't, I don't try to write, I, you know, I'm not writing out everything, and this, this music's not about everybody just playing one part and that's it. You know, the whole point of what they're supposed to be doing. Like I said, I don't, I don't really see as clear a, 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 a demarcation between um, improvisation and composition. So I'm sort of not thinking in the way you're answering the question. But if I give Jonathan, you know, um, something to play, or you know, there, there's some parts or something that has to play in a song or whatever, you know, he's well aware that the whole point that we're gonna, we, we're taking this thing is like clay and we're, you know, we're doing this with it. We're molding it and doing all kinds of things with it. You know, now a lot of this depends on his ability to do this, you know, but he can take it as far as he's able to take it and, and it still has some, um, this is a funny thing because it's, it's a judgment call, but it still, it still retains some kind of connection to what we're trying to do. It's a very big statement I intended on being made because, it, you know, I, what I've learned over the years is people do things according to their ability. And the people with more ability to stretch it and add more and everything, they do that. And those who have less ability to do that, they tend to stay closer to what you, to what you, um, the, the sort of skeleton that you give them in the beginning. But the point is, is to, you know, take it and, and do what you will with it or what you're able to do, you know. But this is sort of coming out of the African music concept because, um, like for example, a lot of tribes, they would have a lot of people participate in the music, but people participated on the level that they were able to participate. So somebody who was just able to clap, or something like that, that's what they did. They didn't just get on, 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 on some drum and start being the master drummer or something like that. That's not the way it worked. People participated on various levels, but everybody participated in the music making. It would be children there doing something, you know, but on the level that they could do something on, you know. All, all the way from um, from lay person all the way up to like the master drummers who are doing obviously do more you know or master dancer or whatever whatever it has to be you know so every group is kind of like that in the sense that there's always people who are able to do more and therefore do more you know add more stuff and, and constantly you know right right from the beginning and there are people who are sort of you know kind of holding on because they, you know they feel like as soon as they do something they get lost. Sometimes you have somebody who thinks they can do more, but really can't, you know. So I mean, you know, so I mean, um, you know, in which case, you know, that's when the leader has to step in and say, well, you know, maybe you should stay, um, you know, because every time you do that, you, you know, you're messing up, you know, something like that, you know. But so it's, it's, it's a judgment call because I mean, I, I'd rather everybody make their own decisions, you know and their own cause. And I'd, I'd rather when we're playing that everybody, I don't have to tell somebody when to solo, when not to solo, whatever. You know, they just figure out the appropriate moment, jump in and, and, and do their thing. Figure out they haven't played in a while, whatever, you know. But, you know, in terms of the, always thinking in terms of the group, not in terms of, not an ego thing like, well, I just, you know, I wanna, I wanna do this, you know, kind of thing. You know, figure out how to make things work in context and everything. What, no matter what, they're creating different things or whatever on stage, but, the concept is supposed to be about creating, but each person has to figure out how to do that and still be inside the, the thing, you know, inside the language or whatever, whatever you're trying to do. Does that make any sense? Or you just feel like you want to say something else? No, no. No? That answered my question. So it's, um, and then as far as like adding, adding something to a composition, like I said, generally speaking, things are, there's not a whole lot of written down stuff, although recently with the newer members we've had, had, had to write some things down. But it's like Craig said, when you write things down, they tend to be fixed, and then it's harder to get somebody to, to get off of that, you know, because it's, it's so fixed. When I say get off of it, I don't mean get off of it and go anywhere. You know, I mean get, get off of it, but add something compositionally to what you're doing. So in my mind, what you're improvising should be just as, as, as definite as the original idea. You know, that, that's where I want to take my improvising anyway. You know, it should, be just, it, it should be something that if I wanted to write it out, I could have. Does that make sense? It should be that definite, not just you know fluff, pressing down buttons, and, you know, guessing or, or whatever. You know, of course you gotta press down some buttons on saxophone. That's the way it works. So, um, so that's my I got you. So that that's that's my general idea. But people, generally speaking, add stuff on the on the level that they can add stuff. If that makes sense, you know. 
Okay. Um, so improvisation again, like how much time did you put into like, did you put a lot of time into the technical and like, you know, more technical aspects? I mean, would you consider yourself more of a technical player or more of like a kind of by ear player? I mean, obviously like at some point you want to just play by ear, but uh, you know, in school and stuff, there's so many different, you know, approaches to playing over this and that and all that kind of stuff. I mean, how do you I feel work, about it? Give me some examples. Well, like, you know, I don't know, triad pairs, you know, different modes you can play over this, you know, like what, how do you look at this chord, you can play, you know, a uh, whole tone scale over this or that, you know what I mean? I mean, do you think about that stuff at all? Or, I mean, is that just way in the past or you just... <laughs> way in the past. <laughs> Long time ago, <laughs> Jurassic era. Um, it, it depends on what what stage I'm at. If you ask me what I do now, you know, that's obviously different than what I did when I was playing for two years, three years, or you know, whatever. You know, um, in the beginning, I didn't know much, so it was really just about acquisition of, of information. You know, now I don't know much, so it's about acquisition of information. You know? but, but the difference is. You know, I've been trying to acquire this information for a long time, and so as a result, down the road, I picked up some stuff. Whereas in the beginning, I didn't know it. You know, I hadn't picked up anything. You know, so if you were to ask me about scales, modes, triads, this and that, I, I wouldn't have known. You know, it was a point where I wouldn't have known anything about what you were talking about. You know, so I had to. You know, now I do. That that's the difference. However, I look at all those things as just tools. You know. Um, I'm the kind of person that even if somebody tells me about major triad, minor triad, I have to look into it myself to see what it really is, how to use it, you know, how, how, does, it, how does it function, how, what difference does it mean, um, what does it mean to me to, to use this? You know, I won't just swallow stuff because people tell me, you know, this is a major scale, this is a minor scale, so harmonic minor, melodic minor, you know, natural minor, blah, 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 blah. you know, I have to dig and see where did it come from, you know. Why, why is it like this? You know, what are some options? What are some other ways? You know, it could be like this. It's the same thing with anything, with notation, with time signatures, with tonality, the whole, the whole question, you know. And so I kind of dig and try to find out, you know, what's, um, what this really is. And I do realize that there's a certain language that musicians today speak in order to talk to them, you know. Um, it's good if you know that language to, to know what somebody's talking about, you know. I mean, if he tells me, oh, what is an altered dominant here, blah, 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 I don't really think like that myself. But, you know, I know enough to know, you know, approximately what that is, even though it means something a little different to each person, you know. I, I know enough to know approximately what that means, you know, today. But I, that doesn't mean I have to believe in it, necessarily, or, or in, in terms of where I'm coming from. Does that make sense? You know, and um, as far as technique, I don't know whether you meant technique of information or technique on my instrument, personally. but. For me, all those questions, I don't, I don't even think about it because my thing is like, what am I trying to do? Right. And I do what's necessary to get together for what I'm trying to do. You know, if it means repeat, you know, trilling a note for an hour or something like that because that's what I need to do to get, to get together a certain thing, then that's what I do. You know, but I don't do things unnecessarily, you know. Um, I'm not going to just sit around and play box stuff if I'm not going to use it. You know, my whole thing is about use. You know, even though I admire people who do that for skills and things like that, my thing is like, well, if I'm not going to use it, then I'm not going to waste my time dealing with it. If I can't find a, a, a certain um, place where I can use this information or use this skill, I'm not going to just do it just to, you know, just buff up, just to buff up, you know, <laughs> or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Or to impress somebody or something like that. You know, it has to have a purpose. And if I see a purpose in it, then there's a lot of things, you know, that have purpose, you know, and if I see a purpose, then I'll, I'll go through what it takes to learn it, even if it's a struggle. And many times, many times it is a struggle. But I have to see the reason for doing it. So I had a, lot, a little problem in the beginning because people were teaching me things, and I didn't know anything, right? People were teaching me things, and I still felt like I had to see the reason, you know. But like, you're, you know, you have a teacher. I didn't have many teachers, but you have a teacher, and they said to you, well, you need to learn this skill. And um, it's like you have to learn that scale, you know, but I still had to see a reason. At this point, I'm more in control of my own, you know, there's not somebody telling me you have to do this. I'm telling myself I have to do this. But it involves technique, it involves, you know, spiritual stuff, it involves a lot of, a lot of different things. And for me, it's all, it's all just material to be worked with, you know. I'm, I'm going to give you one, one second, I just want to make sure he's finished.
because he's got his mouth open. <laughs> now go ahead. So I mean, what 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 is your like kind of consciousness when you're playing, like when you're performing? I mean, do, is there is there a, a particular kind of place that you like to be at? I mean, yeah. I mean, I know yeah. there's a place that I would like to be at, which is sort of a no mind state. Are you there you though? Know? I mean, can you can well, you control that at all? I mean, you know, it depends on a lot of things. Yeah. Monitor mix could be messed up. You know, you could have. You know, just drove to an accident on Interstate 5. Uh, <laughs> you, know, um, you know, somebody in the band could be bugging you. You just had a fight with your girlfriend. You know, there's all kinds of things can, you know, affect what state you're in. Uh -huh. You know, you can be very hungry. You, 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 you could have ate too much. You know, eating too much. That's right. Uh, horn could be leaking. Man, there's so many things. You know, we're humans, right? Mm -hmm. And so many things can put you out of that zone, you know. So what I find is that I'm rarely in the zone that I really like to be in, rarely. You know, for example, last night, most of the time I wasn't in that zone, you know. But the point is, is that you want to get together enough stuff that even on your worst moments, it's at a certain level. This is the way I look at it. I don't know about you guys, but you know, in your worst moment, when you're dead tired, you're messed up, you're you know hungry, horny, whatever it is, you know, <laughs> you know, you want to make sure the stuff is operating on a on, on on a certain level and it's rising from there, you know. In other words, you want to increase your chances of this zone thing happening, you know, by preparation, by preparing yourself. The better prepared you are, you know, the better your chances. You know, Kobe Bryant doesn't know that that last minute shot's going to go in. He doesn't know that for sure, but if he really really prepares himself, the percentages you know, are much, much better. You know, if he's in tip-top shape, you know, at the end of the game that he's going to be, you know, he's going to be, you know, able to do it. You know, and, and the team has enough, you know, um, they've seen him do it enough, first of all, you know, experience, you know, and the team has enough faith in them that, you know, they say, well, this cat, you know, is going to do it. They don't have that faith in everybody. They're not going to just bring in somebody off the bench and say, okay, you know, we're going to call you a number, you take the last shot. It doesn't work that way, you know. It's the same thing with, with anything in life. The better prepared you are, you know, then, you know, the way I look at it is that, you know, you should be good enough that people shouldn't know that it's a bad night. You know, the, the average person in the audience, only somebody who knows you well should know that. The average person in the audience shouldn't know well, you know. They may not like it, but that's, you know, that's the material. <laughs> you know, that's, a, that's another thing, whether they dig it or not. You know, it's, the, 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 the thing is, is that is it on a certain level, and are you able to get in the area where you want to get to? Now, I'm sure, there are inspired moments, and in those inspired moments where you, you know, you, you know, but even those inspired moments will be at a higher level if the preparation is there. For me, it's all about the preparation, you know. It's, it, it's, it's all about that, because you don't, you don't know what one moment's gonna bring you, you know, what kind of inspiration you're gonna have or, or whatever, you know. But you find yourself in that state more and more if you prepared yourself. You know. What do you do to prepare yourself? Pra work. Just do you practice a lot then? Or? If you don't, you know, you'll know about it. You'll be the first one to know about it. <laughs> I mean, you work, man. It's just work. There's no secret. Uh, work, study, practice. You know, I mean, work. There's a lot of ways of practicing. You know, it's not just. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sure everybody this band does a lot of mental practice, and there's all kinds of ways of you know. But you immerse yourself. That's it. I mean, the, you're going to get the results based on what you put into it. What you put into it is, is what you're going to get out of it. You don't put much into it, then you don't be surprised when it's not happening, you know. You know, or, you know, you may fool yourself into believing it's happening. But um, it's just work. The answers to all you all's questions about, you know, how do you do this and how do you do that, the, 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 the one, that one word is the answer, work. You know, if you work, you know, after repetition and doing something over and over, you'll figure out the easiest way and the hardest way. I mean, the easiest way to do something, not the hardest way. You'll figure out the easiest way to, to, to go about something because you will try stuff that doesn't work. And that's your best teacher, is making mistakes. You know, you try something and you say, well, you know, I've tried this for such and such amount of days, hours, years, whatever, and now I know that this is not the right way for me. This may work for somebody else, but for me, it, I get better results when I do it this way. You know, you practice and you figure out the ways you get better, better results, you know. That's by experience. It's not by somebody telling you, you know, Greg, do it this way. You know, I mean, you can't, you know, that may give him a few hints of, of things to try and everything, but until he tries it, he doesn't know that's going to work for him, you know. 
That may work for Oscar Peterson, but it might not work for him. He's a different person with a different way of thinking, you know. Yeah, I don't know what that is. It's like ableism. <laughs> so um, it's just work. It's not, believe me, it's, it's, no, it's no secret. <laughs> it's no secret. Hard work. That's all it is. And, and you have to slow things down. And I think you have to, it's, it's better to understand what you're doing, to understand things. Don't just rush in and, and just do something. You know, but try to understand what it is. And keep, um, keep building your creative, what I call a creative muscle. Keep, you know, trying to get to new, to different things. Not new things, but the things that are unfamiliar to you. You know, because that, you get quicker and quicker doing that, the more, the more you do that. Uh, yeah, I want to know, when you're, usually I, uh, when I hear you playing solo, mm -hmm. somehow you have a call or a trigger where you bring an ensemble in and they play a head. Mm -hmm. what, is that, I mean, what is there? Is there a call? Is it's there a call or a trigger. Case? That's what it is. Yeah, what is it? <laughs> I mean, I, I can't make the Well, first, there's two things. One, there are there are spontaneous th things like that that happen, you know, and that's just communication. In other words. I may play something spontaneously and he can respond. It's not worked out, okay? And I, I, um, I view those things as calls too. You know, they're just spontaneous. Or he may do something and I may respond. You, you dig what I'm saying? So um, we might need to hit those doors because it's, it's getting irritating. <laughs> <It's starting. laughs> Huh? There's something on your uh, page on your website mm -hmm. talking about a technique that you use for improvisation where it's like you start with a tone and then from that tone you throw two lines off of it. Yeah, that's something else. That's, yeah, I'm going to get to that. That's, okay. that's, that's a whole other thing that nobody's talking about. Because <coughs> that's just some theoretical stuff. Oh, I thought you had finished it. No, 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 no. No, no, no. no. <coughs> just wanted to close the doors. Um, but um, I'll get to that. That's on my website anyway, so people can just go look at it. Yeah, but they may not understand it when they see it. Right, but they got to look at it, then see that they don't understand it, then come back and ask me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. Go to my website, check it out. Talk to me about it tomorrow. Okay, so, <laughs> um, I don't like explaining things that people don't, you know, they don't know anything about it yet. You know, there's, there's tons of things like that. It's a lot of them. That's not, that's just one thing. Um, so this, what I'm saying is that this kind of communication, back and forth communication, should be happening anyway at all times. It's just like us talking, you know. And then there are some things that sort of become, um, what's, the, what's the best word, just sort of standardized or group cliches or whatever. In any group, you know, you figure out ways of doing things. And those ways of doing things, you know, come together and they help define the sound of that group. You know, so when it, when you're playing with Tim Burner, there's, there's certain things that, you know, they've developed together. You know, certain responses and certain ways of getting to certain air, sonic areas and things like that. And they've developed those ways. And then that those ways become um, characteristic or idiosyncratic, is that word, of, of, of that group. You know, so this group is no different than any other group, you know. Now, what happened with me when I was younger is that I noticed this early on with different groups. I would listen to like some of the things I heard on record. I would listen to some of the groups live and everything, and I noticed that these different groups had certain characteristic things that they did, you know. And so that stayed in my mind. So at, when I formed groups, I mean, you know, it's naturally something that you try to develop your own ways of getting this stuff, you know. Of of of, of I mean, most people, I guess, with most people, it would just be like something that's written down in the composition, you know, do a break here, like what you were describing the other day, you know. Guys play these breaks here and there and stuff like that. You know, well, you know, we try to develop different ways of doing it, and, and, and I deliberately on stage try to throw curveballs and try to get us to do different different ways of doing it. You know, so that the band remains flexible. Because if you keep doing things the same way each time, then people begin to expect that, and then it becomes like um, sort of encrusted into one form, and, and you you don't know, you don't want to stay flexible. You know, the band should be like this. This organism that's able to respond to different situations, you know, sort of like a antibody or whatever, you know. So it's, it's moving different ways, and so that's that's how I think of it. You know, it should be kind of a, able to morph itself and adapt to certain things, you know. But for that to happen, everybody has to be listening and concentrating at all times, which doesn't happen a lot. 
Yeah. Is it the same? Like, if you have a tune? No. So it's just like you play it? It's different depending on what's happening. And you don't come up with it sometimes? Sometimes we come up beforehand, sometimes we don't. You know, but I mean, me personally, how I'm going to do it on a particular night, no, I don't come up with that ahead of time. No, I don't plan that out. You know, it depends on what's happening and how things, like sometimes we may be playing two and three um, pieces, let's say, of, of what we call compositions at one time. You know, things may come together that way. And you don't know how those things are going to work at, until you actually do it. And then you have to sort of figure out spontaneously how to get into this, how to get out of it, how to you know do different things, or, or you know how to maybe nudge it this way or that way. But it may not happen like that. You know, somebody else may do something and it may go do, do something else. You know, especially back when, when uh, for example, when Anthony Tibb was in the band, he had been in the band so long that he he influenced a lot of things. You know, just he, he would start out playing different things and influencing things. You know, this this happens when you know all the parts and when you know it, you know the concept really well. You know, then you start adding more. You know. That's, you know, you just get more balls, you know, whatever, you know, start adding more things, which is the whole point, as far as I'm concerned, you know. So, I mean, if Craig was in the band for a long time, you know, there should be moments, I mean, you know, what happens if I just stop playing? You know, stuff stuff has to go on, you know, I mean, so the, the way it should work is that if I stop playing, somebody else should, you know, or some other group, you know, should take, you know, um, take the reins, you know, you can't just like, you're not in the carriage, you just drop the reins. Drop the reins and then that's it. Just crash. You know, <laughs> I mean, somebody needs to pick up the okay. You know, same thing, right? So it's just like anything else. What happens in basketball when Kobe and Shaq go to the bench? The, the other cats have to pick it up, right? So it's, 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 it's the same thing. You can't just say, well, I don't know what we're going to do now. Kobe and Shaq on the bench. You know, I mean, you, know, you got you to gotta, you do something, otherwise, it's going to fall apart. So it's the same thing. But that doesn't mean that even if I'm playing, somebody could, that could happen. You know, but it usually only happens when people are in the group for a while, you know, and, and, um, and they just feel that they can, they can do that. Because the longer somebody's in the group, the more their personality comes to bear on, on, on what's happening. You know, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, but he's been in the group for a second now, I don't know how long, a couple of years or whatever. And, you know, more and more his sound, is 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 defining what's happening. You know, that's 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 the way it works. You know, and his sound is nothing but his personality, just in sound. You know, the way he thinks. You know, there's certain things he thinks, believes, don't believe in genius. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so that becomes part of the group. There's no genius on drums now. You know? <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> And um, you know, the longer somebody's in the group, the more the, the, the more that thing. You know, you shouldn't just be um, at the same level as you were in the, in the beginning. You know, you 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 start to add more and more. And this is true whether it's Duke Ellington's band or whatever. You know, Johnny Hodges being in that group for so long and everything. After a while, his personality had a big effect on you know what was happening with that band. You know, John Gimmel with Sunrise or any, anybody with with anybody. You know, just a duet. Same thing. Does that make sense? And then that affects me too. Yeah. Because I don't play the same way with him as I played with drummers in the past. Yeah, I mean, now it makes sense, but I was kind of aiming more specifically at when you're like taking a really long solo and like, and you're having that feeling that you play and everybody comes in together. I mean, that, that is from listening, but you have to, there's something that you're playing that, that brings them all in. Or is it the end? No, no, you're, 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 I mean, there are moments when that happens, but. They don't know what that's going to be, yeah. All right. you know. And, and a lot of times, I don't know how it's going to be or how I'm going to do it. It's not set. The whole point of it is that what happens when we rehearse is that when somebody joins the band new, they have exactly this kind of question, you know. And um, so, in a rehearsal, we'll give them an example of how something can go. The worst thing that can happen is that they take that example and think that that's the way it goes, yeah. you know. Because what happens is that then we get in concert and it didn't go that way. You know, and they say, well, what happened, man? That that would be we rehearsed, you know, and so, you, know, and so, you know, because the whole point is that it's fluid. And, it, and, and this is an example of something that can happen, you know. But there's a lot of ways that it can happen, you know. And a lot of times, if you think it's fixed, you'll be the only ones over here. Everybody will be over there. You'll be the only one, like, asking yourself what happened, you know. But, I can say, yeah. 
two things to know is there's no such thing as a set. <laughs> yeah, no such thing. So I don't know, you know, you still know what's gonna happen, what's coming up next, whatever. And the other thing is if you take like the first thing that we were talking about, which was the fact that you're supposed to know all the parts to everything, he can play any part to anything, ultimate, I mean that's you know, not right, drum part, whatever. Definitely not with me in the group right now, but you know, <laughs> like I'm gonna miss a lot. But I can all this, you know, even as we keep going, I'm like, oh, that's that, that's the drum chant to this other tune, and that may be, and it could come out anywhere, at any tempo, in any context, somewhere, you know, things like he'll he may play things like that. There are some things that he may do a couple times, even to help, but you know, ultimately it could be anything from any tune. It could be the bass line of this tune. It could be. The or something they never heard. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, we, we create tunes on the spot. Some, actually, you know, even though Jonathan is the youngest member of the group, he's also the oldest member of the group. I mean, uh -huh. he's been in the group the longest. You know, so you could probably, due to your vast experience, <laughs> <laughs> you could probably speak on this. I mean, what what are some of the you know? I mean, like speak on what Craig just spoke on. somebody's playing, because there's a lot of ways of approaching this, right? You can just sort of drift away while somebody's taking a long solo and not really pay attention to them. That would be kind of dangerous in this band, you know, because um, just at the moment when you drift away is probably when something will happen, you know? I mean, you know? And so the only remedy for that is to pay attention at all times, you know, because um, something might happen at all times. But it's not, just, it's not just within the solo, because sometimes somebody can be doing something tricky with the form or whatever, you know, I mean, um, I do this a lot because the people who I like have done it, so I try to do it my own way, you know. But what I mean by that is that you have to be paying attention to where things are within the palette of what we're doing, you know. Because I may do something in a funny spot just as a sort of a, a juggling act to prepare for something that's gonna happen. And, and if, you, if, you're, if you're just listening to me and you let that pull you, the gravity of that pull you too much, you can end up being in the wrong spot because you follow somebody, you know. So there's, there's, there's um, the following thing you have to watch out for. You have to follow, but you have to follow in a way where you have awareness, where you know where you are. You can't just follow um, based on um, the notes and rhythms that somebody's playing, you know. 
You know what I'm saying? It, it doesn't make much sense without an example. So it's kind of hard, you know. Yeah, but all right. Let's 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 do an example, but let's play something normal that you. Because the thing is, is that you don't you won't know the example unless you know what the form and everything is. Otherwise, it does it does you no good, you know, because the whole thing sounds like chaos, you know. So we'll play. Um, you know Donna Lee? Yeah. The song Donna Lee? You, you know it well? Okay. All right. So we'll play that. And I'll just give you an example. Thank <laughs> you. 